Today I'm flying Air Canada in business class on the 787 Dreamliner from Zurich in Switzerland to Toronto in Canada. I have certain preconceived notions about Air Canada. Let's see if they can impress me on this 9-hour transatlantic flight. I paid for this trip myself and it was the first leg of my round-the-world comedy tour in late 2022. Zurich is the biggest city and airport in Switzerland, and for intercontinental flights, it is also my home airport. I arrived by train, of course, it is Switzerland after all. The train station is located just below the terminal, and it serves both long-distance and commuter trains. When flying Swiss, I would normally check in right here. This is literally after I come up the escalators from the train tracks. One of the very best things about Zurich Airport is that there is a real shopping mall right here in the terminal building and it is accessible to everybody whether you're traveling or not. There's a food court, there is a grocery store with normal prices and all kinds of other shops that you would find in a shopping mall. Really nice. And now it's time to check in. Let's head to the Air Canada check-in desk. For Air Canada, I have to go to check-in area number two. At the check-in counter, a problem with my ticket emerged. It's nothing to do with this particular flight and I will talk about it separately. After about 30 minutes of dealing with that problem, I was on my way through security, which is always a breeze here in Zurich. Intercontinental flights depart from the E-gates, which are located in a separate building, and you get there with this underground metro train. Inside the tunnel, there are these beautiful displays of scenes from Switzerland. The flickering you can see on the video is only due to the camera. In real life, this projection looks super smooth. At the E-Gates, I have access to the Swiss Senator Lounge, and this is hands down one of my favorite Star Gold lounges anywhere in the world. I often fly specifically via Zurich instead of Basel just to get the opportunity to enjoy this lounge. Welcome to the Zurich Senator Lounge at the E-Gates. I'm coming to you from one of these soundproof phone booths that they have around here. Uh, as I entered the lounge, I was told that I was not allowed to film the faces of people, so I'm doing it in the safest possible place where there's no other person around. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this flight to Toronto on Air Canada. We're boarding in just under one hour. Some of the highlights of the Senator Lounge include that they prepare meals for you in front of you. There is this whiskey bar with over 200 whiskeys, and usually there is a knowledgeable member of the staff who will also give you recommendations. There is plenty of fresh food on offer. Lots of drinks. Both savory and sweet snacks, of course, including Swiss chocolates. The lounge also features these mini offices in case you need to get some work done or jump on a phone call. There is also a quiet area with reclining seats. One of the very special things here in the Swiss Senator Lounge in the E-Gates area is this collection of mountains. That's actually the entire Swiss Alpine mountain range there with the heights and names of the various mountains. Definitely worth checking out. From the lounge, you can get beautiful views of the runway. There is a balcony out here, but today it was closed because it was raining. One thoughtful touch on that balcony is that they have binoculars so you can see the planes better. Of course, there are great bathrooms in the lounge as well, and they're always super clean. In addition, there's also shower facilities. This is definitely an excellent lounge. It's just about boarding time and it's time to leave the whiskey bar and the Senator Lounge behind. See you on the plane. Today I'll be flying the Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. The seats are laid out in a one-to-one -one configuration in this reverse herringbone structure. My seat today is to Delta, which is in the middle. This is not what I originally booked. Unfortunately, I lost my window seat booking in the shenanigans that happened right before check-in. 
The seat comes with a pillow, a mattress topper, and a blanket. There's also noise-canceling headphones, an amenity kit, and a water bottle. The seat is very comfortable. I'm not particularly tall, 1 meter 75 centimeters, and there is plenty of legroom in this seat. There is also an incredible amount of privacy. Due to the design of this business class pod, you basically see nobody else on your flight. Before departure, I was handed a menu with a separate drinks menu. And this reminds me that Air Canada doesn't call this business class, they call it signature class. Except that they actually call it business class almost everywhere else in their marketing. The headphones plug in with this three pin connector and they do have active noise cancellation. They go over the ear, which is not particularly comfortable, especially when I'm wearing glasses. I very much prefer on-ear headphones instead. The active noise cancellation is really good. You can easily test it by unplugging the three-pin connector, and then you will be left with the passive noise cancellation in the headphones only. All the controls are here on my right on this dedicated miniature display. For the seat, you can set it in three default positions, and if you want to do some additional adjustment, you have controls for that as well. This includes the firmness of the seat. Definitely take the time to see what fits you best. With the control panel, you also have full control over the three different lighting zones that are available on the seat. There's the overhead light, there's the light in the footwell, and there's also this decorative light on the divider between the two seats. On the control screen, there are also three options under the service category. This control panel is permanently mounted to the side of the seat, and it is separate from the in-flight entertainment control, which is housed in this separate compartment. In this storage compartment, there is a bit of space for your personal items. There is also a power plug in here and a cutout so that you can have your cables comfortably exiting the storage compartment without being trapped by the lid. Before departure, we get the signature Air Canada safety video, definitely one of my favorites. They are showing all the safety procedures in the Canadian wilderness. This is absolutely stunning. As we're taking off, I'm reminded of just how nice and quiet the Boeing 787 really is. The Air Canada in-flight entertainment is best in class. You can control it either with the touchscreen in front of you or with a remote which also has a separate screen. With the controls on the remote you can do everything that you can do on the touchscreen but you can also set it to show something else on the remote screen, for example the flight map. The in-flight entertainment screen is big and bright and it has one of my favorite features, this button that allows you to go back 15 seconds in the movie or TV program you were watching. This can be really handy when the flight attendants serve your meal, for example. Besides the typical media and flight map, there are lots of features on the system as well. This is the best in-flight entertainment that I've experienced in a while. On this flight, they did have pre-departure drinks. I enjoyed a nice Prosecco, but forgot to film it. So here instead is the ginger ale and the glass of water, which I had with the nuts that were served once we were airborne. Let's start with the meal service. For the appetizer, I selected the smoked salmon with potato salad and horseradish mousse. It also comes with a green salad. And this empty plate, that's for the bread, which I declined. The meal service comes with proper metal cutlery and a cloth napkin. And you get these funky salt and pepper shakers. Once I was done with the appetizer, they removed that single plate and brought in a hot plate with the main course. This time I had sea bass filet with basil sauce, rice paella, and spicy pepperoni. The quality and presentation of the food was fine. Air Canada is not known for having excellent food, but this was fine. Now it's time for dessert, and this is where I ran into a bit of a service issue with the crew. They brought out this dessert cart. And I asked the flight attendant if it was okay that I filmed the cart. Then I asked him what's on offer. And he said, quote, 
Actually, there's a menu right there. Implying that he didn't really want to take the time out of his day to tell me, and I should just have a look at the menu instead. This is not really the attitude that I would expect in business class. However, I do understand that this gentleman typically does not work in business class and he was called up from economy. The dedicated business class flight attendant did explain to me what was on offer on the dessert cart. I picked the crumble cake and the cheese plate, which was yummy. Of course, we had just left Switzerland after all. Now let's have a closer look at the seat. And I know that some people hate on the placement of this tray table. It is permanently mounted and you cannot fold it away. But I actually like it. The tray table gives you an additional storage shelf right there in front of you. It does slide in and out very far. At least once you find where the clasp is located, it is on the underside of the tray table. The best feature with this tray table design is that I can get in and out of the seat even when the tray table is folded down. Let's have a look at some other features on the seat. There is a reading light that pops out like that. Down by the aisle, there is a small storage compartment as well. I'm not entirely sure what its intended use is. However, it turned out to be super convenient for trash. For example, I put the plastic bags from the blanket in there and the flight attendants regularly emptied it out. This is the most clever way to handle trash on an airplane that I've seen. Just next to the cubby, you can also adjust the height of the aisle side armrest. The seat folds down to a very comfy bed. You get this mattress topper, which cleverly hooks onto the top of the seat so it stays in place. The bed is long enough for me to sleep on, but the footwell is rather cramped. There is one thing that other airlines do better than Air Canada, namely that they have a dedicated place for your shoes. I didn't find that here on this seat, but if you do know where it's located, please leave a comment below. In the lie down position, this seat offers excellent privacy. You can't see anybody from here. On this daytime flight, I was able to get several hours of great sleep on board. Now let's check out the bathroom. The only things that stand out to me is that there are some extra amenities provided. Then there is this magnifying mirror and the maple leaf branding on the wall. A nice enough bathroom. Next, let's have a look at the included amenity kit. There is a pair of socks. There is a high quality eye mask and a cleaning cloth for your glasses and whatnot. You also get a dental kit and some earplugs. Then there is this box from Aqua di Parma, which includes a hand cream and lip balm. And both of those actually came in very handy in the cold Toronto winter. Before landing in Toronto, I was served a light meal. This is chicken breast slices with smoked beef, tomato, cucumber and feta cheese. This meal came with a fruit salad and bread, and it too was fine. There was one aspect of this flight where I felt that the Air Canada service went above and beyond. As I mentioned, I lost my window seat reservation, and there were no more window seats available in business. One of the flight attendants noticed that I was recording. And she said that if I wanted to capture video of the landing, I could grab a window seat in the economy cabin. This was a really thoughtful gesture by the cabin crew. On this same round the world trip, I also flew ANA and Swiss, and I felt that the Air Canada crew was the most welcoming to me filming. This was really, really well done. I just landed in Toronto. This Air Canada flight is over. The flight, once we got going, was actually really, really good. There were some things that happened before that that I'm going to cover in another segment, but what I actually experienced on board was really solid. I'd happily fly Air Canada Business Class on the 787 again. For everything that went right and wrong on this trip, click or tap the playlist on the screen now. My name is Marcus Seppala. Thank you for watching.